Joining us now, Jesse Powell, the CEO of Kraken, the world's fourth largest digital currency exchange. Hi, Jesse. Jesse, what's your reaction first to this new stratosphere Bitcoin is in? The price it hit overnight, more than $63,400. How much does Coinbase's debut, do you believe, tomorrow have to do with that? It's amazing to see a new all-time high for Bitcoin. Uh, it's now in the top mm. 10 currencies in the world uh, in terms of N1 supply. Uh, I think you know, it's, it's hard to know what influences the price of Bitcoin day to day. I think the Coinbase IPO has a lot of eyes on the space. I think a lot of people are hyped about that. I think people see are increasingly seeing this is the, the legitimate legitimization of the space. And, um, you know, many people have not had access to to cryptocurrency because they've been regulated out of it somehow, but they may have access to the equities markets and uh, they may be looking at Coinbase as a way to get exposure um, if they haven't already gotten exposure through MicroStrategy or Square or Tesla or any, any one of these other uh, companies that have put Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Right. We've heard about the breadth of Coinbase, the numbers of more than 50 million uh, people who have signed up to be on it, um, 50 currencies you can, you can transact in on Coinbase. So we've heard about all the so-called great things. You're a competitor. What isn't good about Coinbase? Why should I choose Kraken <laughs> over Coinbase? Uh, what we really focus on at, at Kraken is, is customer service first. Um, you know, we're the largest exchange in Europe. Uh, Coinbase kind of got their start in, in the States ahead of us, although we're a U.S.-based company. Um, you know, and, and what drives us really is, is access to financial services. Uh, we want to bring crypto to the masses. We're really focused on, on the retail consumer market. Um, you know, what, that pain point we had early on that forced us into Europe as our first market uh, a lot of people still mm -hmm. experience today. You know, that was because we couldn't get a bank account for the business to to facilitate client transfers. And uh, we got shut down uh, for many bank accounts over the years. And um, right. that the access to financial services is still worldwide a major problem that affects billions of people. And that's really the challenge that we're focused on serving. And um, we really want to give excellent customer service, excellent security. Cool. You know, the company's been around for 10 years. We've got 1,800 people now. Um, you know, so I'd say that that is our differentiating focus. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I could only speculate about, you know, kind of where Coinbase is headed. But uh, you don't have to speculate on this because it became a fact. The last couple of weeks, Coinbase was hacked. Uh, people looked and they couldn't either get into their accounts or they found their accounts were emptied. Have you at Kraken ever experienced anything like that in your customer vaults? Uh, I'm not familiar with this incident. You know, there are occasionally users who get phished or their accounts are hacked or mm -hmm. using weak passwords or they're using the same password in other places. And um, that unfortunately, you know, makes accounts um, vulnerable. And, you know, just like you could have your bank account hacked, uh, you could have your PayPal account hacked, you know, the same for, for crypto exchanges as well. So people do need to be very careful with their account credentials. They need to make sure they're on the right website. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, there are very few exchanges that have stood the test of time. Kraken has been around for 10 years. We've never been hacked. Uh, so fingers crossed, knock on wood, you know, hopefully we can maintain our, our high level of security. Never been hacked. Uh, okay. We've seen reports that you too will eventually consider a direct listing or somehow going public possibly next year. Can you give us more on that? I mean, I, I would like to hear it from you and why you would consider this when you're already making a lot of money and it exposes you to the public markets. And, and that sometimes is not a great thing because you have to sit there and give your quarterly reports. Analysts are all over you. Shareholders are complaining. So will you go public within the next year? For sure. And, you know, it's kind of nice to have Coinbase out there being the guinea pig for this. And we'll see if it, it affects their business and their ability to to move quickly uh, and this is a very fast moving space and that's something that we're very cognizant of uh, we definitely want to retain our ability to move quickly and um, you know the u.s regulators historically have been um, among the most severe internationally you know we, we're dealing with the the sec and the cftc on a regular basis they're asking us to shut down products that um, that are, that they're not able to shut down um, for international competitors. So they're, they're putting U.S. companies at a disadvantage. Oh. And I think it's still on the table, you know, whether, whether we stay a U.S. company or not. You know, we may be forced out of, out of the country uh, by overregulation or by uh, the enforcement guys not talking to the policy guys and not having kind of a national strategy on, on cryptocurrency. And 
you probably saw the, so, the report from uh, the former CIA director who says we need to be be worried about China. Bitcoin is is least used for, for illicit transactions. And we really need to treat this as a national security issue, a national economic issue, like we did with the internet. And I think it's something that the United States can be dominant at, um, but there are other countries competing. And you know I think we could fall behind by shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, as far as Kraken's listing, uh, second half of next year, we're on the road to be able to do it. We wanna have the option to do it, but no guarantees we pull the trigger in the end. We'll kind of see where things are at at that time. Uh, uh, I do just have to ask you, if you were to move to a different country, where would you move? So we've got licenses in several other countries, uh, probably, you know, Tokyo um, has a very robust set of regulations. The UK has a very robust set of regulations. Um, the UAE is also um, very business friendly. So, you know, I think any one of these countries um, which kind of hmm. understands the business better is not really looking to put local domestic businesses at a disadvantage to foreign competitors, which they're not able to enforce against, um, I think would, would be a good home for us.